Okay. I do want to just make a couple of uh, quick announcements before we get started. Remember, we'll be praying for Resurrection Sunday in a couple weeks, and the Lord will do great things there. Yes, we had a great staff meeting last night. Wonderful ideas, a beautiful spirit of unity. We are so thankful for that. Also, we do have some food bank things, and today's kind of potpourri day. We have hydrogen peroxide. We have different kinds of disinfectant sprays. We have antibacterial soap. We have a rubbing alcohol, a few different brands and sizes, I think. So uh, if you would like to get that after church, please feel free. Maybe you don't need it, but a neighbor does. You can give that to a neighbor as well. So uh, this tell them it's a gift. Hallelujah. And um, God is so good. Also, don't forget on your way out, if you don't mind. We haven't been doing tithes and offerings normal way. Just because of COVID, we're trying to do it the best way. But please don't forget to give on the way out. Brother Steve Burmas will be there. Brother Andrew Cooper will be there to receive your giving. God loves our cheerful giving. So 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning in verse number 3, it says, Let no man deceive you. Now, I would like for us to take note at some particular words in this passage. And the first is deceive. Mm -hmm. To deceive. And so deception is giving an appearance or an impression different from the true one or misleading. So be, be careful lest anybody gives an, a, an appearance of being right, but they're really wrong. Amen. Something that is mm -hmm. appears to be true, but it is misleading. Amen. So deceive. You don't mind, let's everybody say the word deceive. 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 So let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And in Greek, that word would be apostasia. Apostasy. That man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. The man of sin is usually referred to as the beast or the antichrist. Verse 4, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or his worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, lot in verse 4, but that is where most people get that the temple in Jerusalem is going to be rebuilt, and it is rapidly becoming a reality. Saudi Arabia just said that um, they have relinquished all rights in Islam to the uh, Jerusalem and the Temple Mount just this past week, and uh, seemingly preparing the way for its rebuilding. And so since he wants to be like God, the Antichrist, well, in the holiest of holies, that's where the glory of God used to be. Now it's in the man Christ Jesus. But it used to be there. He wants to sit there. Okay. So he can act like he is God. Verse 5, remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. So Paul did teach prophecy, even in a very brief time. Now verse 6, and now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. He's talking about the Antichrist. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. So it was working 2,000 years ago. Only he who now led it, that's a King James word for stoppeth. He who now stoppeth will stop until he, the church, the body of Christ, be taken out of the way. And that is the reason most people would feel that the Antichrist can't fully come to the throne until the church is taken to heaven. Verse 8. And I know there's vast differences of opinion on that. I'm just talking traditionally. Verse 8. And then shall that wicked, notice it's capitalized, so it's talking about a particular person, be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the, consume with the spirit of his mouth and it shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. So there's going to be a man that's going to try to rule the world, but he's going to worship the God of forces, according to the book of Daniel, and Satan is going to be the one that raises him up. And he's going to have all power and signs and lying wonders. So lying is yet another word I would like us to 
Fun because also you have deceived, lying, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. Now there is a maximum of history, many, if not most, maybe all of, of us have heard today, that you corrupt in order to conquer. This would have been like Giuseppe Mussini. And uh, another maxim of history is a pure people are very difficult to subjugate. And so what happens is sin comes in like a flood before the Antichrist rises. So the deceivableness of unrighteousness. So if you are in sin, Satan is the author of sin, mm -hmm. then if you're in sin, you can and will be deceived. Mm -hmm. That's the reason we stress holiness and purity and love of the Lord so much you, because the church is to be the pillar and ground of the truth. And it's truth that it's going to be holy. Yes. So it will not be deceived in this end time now. Mm -hmm. But you had better get a strong hold on God. So the sealness of unrighteousness is them to perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Now, a few words in that passage to pay particular attention to is the and the, the love of the truth. You can't have a love for the truth. Yeah, I really love Acts 2, 38, what is in holiness, but it's just part of my life. You gotta have the love of the truth. You can't have the love of a truth or a false truth. But also notice the word deceivableness as we've already mentioned. So we've got deceive, lying, deceivableness. And then two more verses. I know we have read a lot here today, but we need to. And for this cause, for this cause, what cause? Well, they were in sin. There was deceivableness of unrighteousness. And they didn't have the love of the truth. So in the end time hour, if you have a love of the truth, you're not going to make it. Okay. If you have the love of a truth, you're not going to make it. Yeah. You've got to have the love of the truth. Yes. And God's not going to play second fiddle. Yeah. So and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. That's not just going to be a delusion. Now, when God sends a delusion, that's really bad. Yeah. It's like in 1 Kings 22, when a lying spirit went, was a lying spirit in 400 or so prophets of Baal. And, uh, but a strong delusion. This means people are going to think they're saved mm -hmm. and not be saved. Yeah. As you've heard many times, probably, that... The uh, best state of mankind is to be saved and know you're saved. Right. The next best state of mankind is to be saved but think you're lost. Right. Don't worry. Uh, the third best state of mankind is to be lost and know you're lost. Right. And the worst state of mankind is to be lost and think right. you're saved. Right. And so this is what's going to happen with this strong belief. People think they're all right. Can't tell them they're not. Amen. That they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed in not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So here, this is something that's a theme all throughout the Bible that correct doctrine and correct lifestyle go together. Because if you're in an incorrect lifestyle, believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So and you remember in Romans 1.32, it said not only do the same, these 23 sins that are listed before that, but had pleasure in them to do them. So we, it's not enough not just to do them. We can't have pleasure in people who do those sins. Okay, so I'll read verse 12 again. That they all might be damned who believed in not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So the battle is if you believe the truth, or are you going to have pleasure in unrighteousness? That is the battle. Amen. So the deceptiveness of delusion, we're going to look at that just a little bit today. I appreciate you standing and bearing with me through that long scripture reading. I wonder if we could. Let's just pray together. Ask God to do everything he wants to do in the remainder of the service. I'm 
Sure, there's more healings that can go forth, more yeah. miracles that can go forth. Yeah. I know you know that. Let's pray together. Yes. God, I glorify you. I love you. In Jesus' name. I am so thankful I'm together with my brothers and sisters in the church, God. And you told us to gather together more as we see that day approaching. So God, let us obey that commandment to get together the more as we see that day approaching. Lest even though we don't think maybe we could be deceived, all of us have that potential. God, help us not be deceived. You had to tell the apostles multiple times, they keep no man deceive you. And God, if they could spend three and a half years walking with you, then we have to be on guard. God, give us all here today the love of the truth. God, in Jesus' mighty name. And not just those of us in these four walls, but God, there could be hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands in this area outside of these four walls that have the love of the truth, God. Yes. So we can all make heaven together yes. because it's not of he that willeth or that runneth, but it is you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. We glorify, it's not who we think is saved, it's who you have deemed that is saved. And we have walked through the door that you have opened with the keys to the kingdom. We glorify you, we love you. Yes. In Jesus' name, and God, we do ask you to confirm your work with every miracle, sign, and wonder today. Open every heart to receive the word of God. In Jesus' name, I glorify you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Why don't we just thank the Lord? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We praise you. In Jesus' name. If you need to why don't you just start to say, Jesus is God. Jesus is God. And you can be seated in the name of the Lord. Again, great to see everybody here in the name of the Lord. How do you feel like I need just a quick statement? You know, the things you mentioned about vaccine, that is totally great. My attitude on the whole thing is, is if you feel like God wants you to get one, you do that. If you don't, then don't. And that's all it is for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That is not something to divide the body of Christ over. Hallelujah. <laughs> Those type things. Amen. So follow the peace of all that holiness. So God is good. But we do understand both sides and respect both sides. So deluding our own self. Some people delude themselves. You have known people. I have known people who have walked around deluded. Who have convinced themselves that one thing is the way it should be. And it's not that way. They have deluded themselves. And so this is a phrase that is in the popular vocabulary. And then there is a great book by Matthew, and it's called Popular Delusions. Throughout history, people have totally convinced themselves that certain events were going to happen. In 1000 AD, in the days leading up before 1000 AD, people were totally convinced that Jesus Christ was going to come again. There was a popular delusion. If you read the history of the time, the things that were going on were absolutely amazing. Now, I'm old enough, and some of you may be old enough, to remember 88 reasons why Jesus is coming in 1988. This was before the Internet. I shudder to think why it would be like in the days of the Internet. But people were convinced that Jesus was coming in 1988. A rocket scientist had done certain calculations and it sounded very convincing. But I remember the Lord was kind of, sometimes you just have to go by the spirit of truth that's in you. And so it's like, God was like, no, that's not it. But I will tell you, there were churches that were packed out from that delusion. And you can you believe there were still people gullible enough, I know nobody in this room, but there were still people gullible enough to believe, well, he said I was off by one year, and he wrote the book the next year called 89 Reasons Why Jesus Will Come in 89. What many people don't know is he has come out with a book basically every year since, he may have stopped just recently, I haven't checked, about why Jesus was going to come that time. Then, of course, Y2K. 
we had a wonderful apostolic United Pentecostal Church pastor who was had an amazing church in Arkansas. And I probably shouldn't have just said that in case he watches this. <laughs> an amazing church. And he felt that Y2K, that before that was a zipper, a great zipper, by the way, it was a computer glitch that was to shut down the world. And I shouldn't pick on this pastor because he was certainly not alone. There were people worth millions of dollars that were selling everything they had in an effort to move to the mountains. Or the hills, or the plains, somewhere where they can live off the grid because Y2K is going to destroy the world. And so many of us remember these type of things. So there have constantly been in the world delusions. There's actually a psychological term for delusions, especially among young ladies. Seems that young lady entering puberty in the years before and after puberty immediately are particularly susceptible to certain delusions. Um, a century ago, it was a condition known as neurasthenia, where they would have fainting spells. And it was considered something that was in a medical lexicon. And I know this is a very real thing, especially with the body conscious culture that we have today. I was reading a phenomenal article on that, that we, you and I, are constantly bombarded on the internet with the most beautiful people in the world that are then photoshopped to make them even more unrealistic. And so then, remember years ago when the internet first came out, Anorexia, and I'm not making fun of that at all. And bulimia came out because people had so popular delusions, popular things have been around for a long time. And I'm not saying that's a delusion, I know that's a very real thing, it's a very real uh, condition that people have. But I'm saying that it, it's something that would be unknown, and then all of a sudden everybody is in all. Uh, we've seen that with other various things, such as cuttings and this type of thing. It's just it's unknown, and then all of a sudden it's, it's just so many are doing different types of drugs and all of this. And so delusions are something that are not uh, foreign to the human race. People are susceptible to delusions. So a delusion is an idiosyncratic belief or impression that is firmly ingrained despite being contradicted by reality. It is typically a symptom of a mental disorder. I'll read that again. An idiosyncratic belief or impression that is firmly maintained despite being contradicted by reality. And so there's going to come a strong delusion in this world that people will believe a lie and they will not be saved. Amen. And I felt in the Holy Ghost to warn us and to take certain steps, to order our steps in the Lord, yeah. that we would not be susceptible to this strong delusion. Because Jesus Christ did not come, he did not give you and I a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And so no weapon that is formed against you and I can prosper. But every tongue that shall rise against you and I in judgment, we shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Our righteousness is of him. So Jesus Christ, whatsoever thing he tells you what to think about every day. It says whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, to think all these things. Right now, there is a popular delusion going out, and it is with something known as NFTs. You may have heard of them. They is called non-fungible tokens. 
And it is saying it's a lie. And so online, people are creating virtual cities for themselves. Mm -hmm. yep. And so then there are architects online that are building virtual houses. Mm -hmm. And so recently, one of the virtual houses that an architect built online sold for about five million Ethereum or real dollars. You can convert Ethereum into real money through Coinbase and this type of thing. And so the person that owns this house now in every virtual war world that is made, and Dr. Lepin is with like that. He was all possible worlds if you study philosophy and all this. But in, in, in every, every virtual world that is created, then this person that paid a few million dollars for this house is now able to move this house into every virtual world. They were making virtual creeks, virtual streams, virtual cities, virtual countryside, virtual uh, animals, virtual families. One artist recently sold a virtual piece of artwork to hang in their virtual house for somewhere around a million dollars. Now, that may be people with a lot of money, but I hate to tell them, but they are deluded. These places don't exist. They're only online. But people are gradually getting bigger and bigger screens for their computers, five feet by three feet screens, and they can live in these vivid imageries of these virtual worlds with the virtual people, with their virtual bodies, with their virtual families, with their virtual animals living in their virtual houses. And it is a cottage industry, they're building virtual furniture that they are selling, in many cases, for large sums of money, to decorate your virtual house. Now, I will tell you, the same culture, and it is not just in America, this is a worldwide phenomenon, the same culture that can be diluted in that, when a guy comes up and says he's God, they'll be like, yeah, we believe that. They will receive that in a moment. Especially if with technology, certain blue beam false flag events and holographic imagery start coming in the sky. I mean, this is the first presidency that it has been seriously discussed that instead of having real uh, press conferences, to just have a holographic press conference, which is a three-dimensional image that he can just stand and talk three-dimensionally. We have for many years been having holographic concerts and holographic duets. You had a famous crooner from years back whose daughter became a very famous singer. And so she sang a duet with her dead dad because they holographed him in and they could sing together. And it looked like the dead dad. Um, is it Snoop Dogg that's been dead for a long time? I don't think it's Snoop Dogg. There's some famous rapper. No, it's not him. And it's not Tupac. That's it. He died in like 96. He constantly makes appearances at concerts singing rap songs with various singers and rappers. Now he's dead. It's not him. It's a holographic image. So with the immorality and the delusion that is already surrounding you and I, coupled with the greatest technologies that the world has ever known because the Bible prophesied knowledge with increase. This makes for a very dangerous and toxic mix. 
And so it makes you and I to where we have to be very convinced of the truth and reality. And don't let the world form you into its mold. And don't let popular opinion tell you what to do. You're going to have to be sold out for Jesus Christ. And you're going to have to let the Word of God and the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus tell you what to do. Because a little leaven leavens the whole lot. If you open your door a little bit for the delusion, uh, if you give Satan an inch, he's going to become your ruler. You give Satan an inch, he will take a mile. And this is a scriptural thing, and this is why Paul said, Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. But the more off as you see that day approaching. Why? Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It is not just your personal relationship with God. It is in the context of the body of Christ and the things God does in the body of Christ. It's going to take all that to make it in the entire hour. Now, to ask Brother Dave if he would be so kind to help with some reading here. So we're just going to ask you, oh, Brother Dave, this looks like you have a Cambridge Bible. Brother Dave, now this thing is highly anointed right here. It looks like it's by Church Bible Publishers. It's a ministry out of Missouri. And this is their large print. It's actually a little smaller of their Cambridge large print. And it looks to be maybe iron cast in. So, Brother Dan, you're liable to just take off preaching while you're reading with that Bible in your hand. Hallelujah. I love the Bible. How about you? You know, they have come out with studies. Let me just say this. I'm not against anybody bringing your Bible electronically to church. But let me tell you, people are into the science. Let me tell you the science of that is the human mind, when it sees things written on the Internet, because the Internet is so changeable, it goes from one page to the other, the human mind, now this is scientific studies, this is not Steve Walter, you can look this up, scientific studies, it interprets what you're reading as temporary. It's the reason the flesh is never satisfied. It is good. But when you read things in hard copy, because it tends to still be there when you're through, our brains interpret that with permanence. So I'm not against you bringing computers. I just want to make you aware, you may want to read your Bible in hard copy a lot. God's good. You know, my namesake in the Bible, Stephen, had people run at him and fight him while he was preaching. And then they stole him. Occasionally I say things thinking, what? Hallelujah. So, Brother Dan, 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 9, oh, you're a great comment. Let no man deceive you by any means. Okay, so deceive you by any means. So people are out there trying to deceive you. Now, my dad gave a piece of worldly wisdom. He said, so this is when my dad was an atheist before he came to the Lord. And he said this. He said, see, there's two types of people in the world. He said, there's people who have money and people who want money. He said, there's two types of people. So there are people out there that are trying to deceive you constantly. Unfortunately, politicians deceive you. On whatever side of the aisle, they will tell you one thing and not deliver. Day one, you're getting a check for two grand. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> Let no man deceive you. But I am thankful for the 14 we just got. <laughs> Let them be shall not know, except there be a falling way first, that man of sin be revealed. Okay, except there come a falling away. Before the Antichrist can be revealed, there's got to be a falling away. This absolutely devastates unconditional eternal security. There's no such thing as once saved, always saved. But this shows that people that are saved will be falling away, and this is going to contribute to the rise of the Antichrist. Now, I don't know about you, I want to be found on fire for the Lord when Jesus comes back. 
And I know you need to. I know you want to be living for God. You want to be worshiping. You want to be praising. You want to be totally where God wants you to be. Do what God wants you to do. You want to be so ready. You want to be praying. You want to be fasting. Hallelujah. You want to be giving. You want to be in tune with God. You want to be in obedience to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Because if you're not, there's going to be a great falling away. So that means there's going to be pressure. Jesus put it like this. Because iniquity would abound, the love of many would wax cold. Wax is a gradual term. So it didn't happen all at once. It was Laodicea. It was, you know, you're rich and increased with good. It was a little bit of, of internet here. Before you know it, your 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 old Facebook far more than your face is in the book. And your own social media far more than you're on your knees talking to Jesus Christ. So there's a falling away that is coming. We're seeing it in the next generation. The next generation, and I'm not talking about a new life, I'm talking about a round Pentecost. That I'm so impressed with them in some ways, but in some, there's, a, there's something there that they have a, just a little difficult time in some cases, or maybe many cases, but we've got great young people here, of committing all the time. And there's just a, a little tiny bit of a lack of anointing there. And it's because it's probably no fault of their own. It's because in the popular culture that they're in, they just think they're doing good. But we don't measure ourselves by how good we are against popular culture. We measure ourselves against the Word of God. What does God want? Look, God, greater is He that's in you and I than He that's in the world. You can win. You're an overcomer in Jesus' name. You're stronger than the devil. Feel the power of the Holy Ghost in you. In the name of Jesus. Not you on your own. That's right. All right. So there's going to come a falling away. And then the Antichrist. The son of perdition. And perdition is all sorts of wickedness. And I will tell you, our generation is inventing wickedness. There are wicked devices out there that have never been in existence before. I, I was talking to a friend last night, and he was eating with the mayor of a very large city in the United States, one of the largest cities in the U.S., and it was just he and his son-in-law and the mayor, and uh, he asked the mayor, he said, what is the biggest problem that you're facing as mayor right now? And he said, pornography amongst children. He said, our children are dabbling and in getting into pornography. Now, parents, I want to encourage you to please read the Word of God with your children. Have a time of Bible reading with your children, a Bible listening with your children. Don't get too busy. Don't get too tired to do that maybe with your grandchildren as well, and be sure to pray with them before they go to bed at night. And be sure to pray that God protects them as they go to school. Many schools are not what you and I remember schools were. The teachers may be great, the administration may be great, but sometimes they get dictates from above that will tell them they have to teach certain things or not teach certain things. But look, if you, it's like one group of people said, the Jesuits say, if you give them a child by the time they're six, but until they're six years old, they'll have a Catholic for life. You have to have spiritual formation in young people. Young people have to have morality as young people. Because if the blind lead the blind, they will all fall into the ditch. So we need strong family. You may be a single mom or a single dad. You're going to have to let God pick up the slack in whatever's missing there. But it's incumbent upon you to please read the Bible with your children. Get Bible storybooks there. Let them listen to things. Let them listen to the adventures of Odyssey. Just let them just let, let their heroes not be these people that are inimical to Christian living. Let their heroes be King David and King 
Solomon and the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Peter and Abraham and Sarah and Ruth and Rebecca and Rachel and Noah's wife and Mary and Martha and, and all of these Elizabeth, let them be their heroes growing up. That, oh, I want to be like those three Hebrew children. And though they try to slay me, yet am I going to serve Jesus Christ. We need some people that are not going to bow to the demonic spirit of Babylon in this world. We need some people that are saying, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. It doesn't matter what the Canaanites are doing. It doesn't matter what the Philistines are doing. It doesn't matter what Hollywood is watching. It matters what thus saith the Word of God, and we're going to live for Jesus Christ. And my problem is, and I don't even know how I developed this problem, but when I was in your shoes, and, and I still in this way, no, you couldn't preach it too hard for me. If somebody's up behind this pulpit, and it, it doesn't matter, I'm a pastor, all the, it doesn't, if somebody's behind this pulpit, and they're preaching the truth in love, and they're trying to get me to heaven, I know that person loves my soul, and I'm going, it motivates me. To the holy city. Hallelujah. But sometimes I get to see everybody that So verse 4. So the, the spirit of Antichrist is trying to exalt itself above everything that's called God. As a culture, we have Christmas. The Antichrist says you can't do that. I'm talking about the spirit of Antichrist. You can't have a day where you talk about Jesus' birth. The one that's, I'm not talking about people who have conviction against the holiday of Christmas. That's something totally different. But I'm talking about it as a general rule. There's a poor man. He's been praying for a football team before they go out. They come and say, you can't pray for that football team. Why? Because the spirit of Antichrist is exalting itself of everything that's called God. Resurrection Sunday. Passover. No, we've got to turn it into something else. Got to turn it into something else. And so, this is happening now. Social media. Social media companies are, are censoring certain scriptures. I can give you a list of scriptures to try to post on your Facebook page. Unless it's just a bad day for the censors. They're going to take it off really quick. Why? Because the spirit of Antichrist. I'm not saying social media is the spirit of Antichrist. But I'm saying certain segments of it have been taken over. That it seeks to exalt itself. Above Jesus. Okay, so brother Dick. Remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you to be Please keep free. And now you know what was point that he might be revealed in this time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. All right. So, let's look at that. It says, and now you know what withholdeth he may be revealed in this time. So there's something that is stopping the rise of the Antichrist. For the mystery of iniquity has already worked. The spirit of Antichrist was there in the first century. Only he who now stoppeth will stop until he be taken out of the way. And so what evidently is going to happen is going to be catching away of the church 
and then the Antichrist is going to rise. Now, that may not be your eschatological belief system. And that's okay. I think you can believe different things, only in time you still be saved. Because it's not Acts 238, one is their holiness. But I have asked people that don't believe what I just said, how do you interpret those verses? And they always have to come up with mistranslations. There's something is mistranslated there. Because they can't come up with any other uh, theme for it. So there's something, and so that something has traditionally been regarded as the church of the living God. And so greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And so the spirit of God blocks the rise of Antichrist. Specifically, the spirit of God in the name of Jesus in the church. Now, I know there's certain popular, even episodic internet personalities that don't teach what I just said. I, I can't go by internet personalities. I have to go by the Word of God. All right? And so, this is what's happening. And so, this is why there has to come a falling away first for the Antichrist to be revealed. All right? So, Brother Dan, keep reading. Now, there was a college industry. If you want views and clicks on YouTube, say, you know the identity of the Antichrist. I had one friend of mine, he was totally convinced Mikhail Gorbachev was the Antichrist. I was thinking, what's he going to do when Mikhail dies? That's what normally happens. And uh, they'll pick somebody and then, and then boom. Same friend. He was totally convinced. Well, I didn't even go into all this. He, he was convinced that uh, there was going to be a China war in the year 2000, and that didn't happen. And he was convinced the temple was being rebuilt in 1993, and that didn't happen. <sighs> the more faults he said, the bigger the industry grew. I'm not sure how to interpret all that. Let's keep reading. God bless everybody. Even him, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. All right, so whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. So the Antichrist is going to come with a shock and awe. It did concern me that in a recent uh, WEF summit that they invited the magician David Blaine. In 2017, I was like, this is where the world's power brokers get. And I'm like, okay, we won't even go there. Because this is probably going on YouTube and we're probably already in deep trouble anyhow. And with all the sinfulness and unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Okay, so your goal, my goal in life, is I got to be saved more than anything else in the world. Yeah. You and I have got to want to be saved. We have got to love God. We've got to love purity of heart, purity of mind, purity of motive. We've got to love Jesus Christ with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. What is the first and greatest command? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, says Jesus. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as you love yourself. And least you hang all the law and the prophets. So even amongst the church, remember, it is already prophesied there is a great falling away, or a falling away, as it's called, in the church. Now, many people say that happened in the Middle Ages. Now, I will tell you, maybe not, because it seems like it happens at the time of the empire, according to this context. Because the more we learn about the Middle Ages, the more we learn that there's always been a church. In many cases, an extremely thriving church. So it seems like the same generation sees the rise of the Antichrist, the same generation is going to see the, the falling away, as it's called. So all the seemingness of unrighteousness, that started in the garden, Satan deceived Adam and Eve. He deceived them. You're living in paradise with no sickness. 
Yes. No sin. Yes. Perfect health. Relationship with God. I'm going to deceive you and say, look at this fruit of the tree. You don't know if it's an apple or not. It's traditionally what is, well, they call that the Adam's apple. It's still in the throat with God. But that's all, that's not scripture. So we don't know if it's an apple or not. Jewish people believe it was a loaf of bread, believe that. Many one atheist spent eight years between the Tigers and Euphrates River trying to prove apples couldn't grow there. The Bible never said it was an apple, and also there's been a worldwide flood since then. So he wasted his life, unfortunately. God only gives us one life. And so for the cause, God shall send them strong delusion. Let me back up a little bit and go to the seamless of unrighteousness. So Satan will deceive you with unrighteousness. Pictures on the internet will deceive you with unrighteousness. Pleasure. The Bible calls them pleasures of sin for a season. Moses, he could have been maybe favorable. But he chose suffering with the people of God because he realized that that was just for a season. All Satan's apples, that old metaphor, had worms in them. Every single one of them. Sin always destroys. Sin always takes you further than you want to go. Keeps you longer than you wanted to stay. And makes you pay more than you wanted to pay. Shakespeare and Ray, oh, what a tangled web we weave when we lie in wait to deceive. All right. And so sin, you and I, let's everybody say the word sin. 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 We have got to shake off sin out of our life. Yeah. People that are trying to get you to sin are not your friend. That's right. They are not. Even him who's coming is uh, working in Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. So there's, Satan is going to come with, again, I'll mention it again, a shock and awe system of technology, demonic spiritual power, and then the sin that is ubiquitous or everywhere will make people highly susceptible to this. Again, if people pay millions of dollars to live in a virtual world, They'll accept the Antichrist. Yeah. Okay, with all the deceivableness of unrighteousness and then the parrot. So unrighteousness lets you be deceived. If you're in sin, you'll be deceived. Because Satan is the father of life. Brother Dan, if you could get me John 8 44. As you're turning there, I'll finish this. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they shall believe a lie. Now, I'm going to tell you, when God sends a delusion your way, you and I are in deep trouble. Uh -huh. Because it is an impossibility to know the truth. It is like a fog. Somebody had a dream, and they're going to all that, about a fog recently. And there was a lot of interpretation of that dream. I thought about it. But it's like a father. People can't know. They don't know right from wrong. Reprobation has happened. They, they, they don't even know. They think they do good. They think they do. You know, Jesus said the time will come. People who kill you will think they do God's service. Paul thought he was living with God. Killed the folks. And so this happened. There's the seagullness and righteousness. Evil communication corrupts good manners. That should rule our social media. There's certain parts of the social media. I remember I heard a, a lady, I think she was in her 80s, and she was up exhorting behind the pulpit many years ago. And she said, I know some of the hell holes some of you heard that on the internet. Friend, it's only gotten worse since then. Ladies, don't you sell your body on the internet. Don't you sell because you can take pictures and make a few thousand dollars a month. Your soul's not worth it. Right. It calls thousands to commit adultery in their hearts. And I just felt I needed to say that to someone. Don't you even consider that. Brother Dave. Nate, ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. 
When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. He is a liar and the father of it. He was the first one who ever lied. He's the father of lies. He's the one that gave birth to lies. He was sitting in the presence of holiness and truth. The way, the truth, and the life. And I'm going to come to a close with this. Even though I'm nowhere close to being done with the notes. And still, the Lord will come to a close. And so Satan is there as the anointed cherub that covers. And so he is in the presence of truth. And he lied to himself. Thinking he was equal to God. And said he will be like the most high. And he will exalt himself, as a 14, above the most high. So he lied to himself. Then he immediately began, or at some point, I say immediately, but at some point, we don't know the time frame really, at some point began to lie to the angels to say, while you're down worshiping the Almighty, Look at me. But his glory was a created glory. God's glory is an uncreated glory. He had a glory of the created, but God has a glory of the uncreated, the one true and living God. But to show you how Satan, how strong he is in this art of deception, not only could he deceive Two people who are in the image of God All right. in the garden, That's right. there were one third of the angels that were in heaven looking at the glory of God that he was able to compare himself to the glory of God and say, no, I'm really God. And one third of the angels fell in rebellion with him. Now I'm going to tell you, angels are greater in power and might, according to Scripture, than you and I. And so I just want to alert you that your soul is the most serious currency going in the universe. Satan wants your soul because you're in the image of God and he wants you to go to hell. He hates God. And if he can't get to God, which he can't, he wants to get to his image. And Jesus cared enough about the image of God that he came as a man. God became flesh and shed God's own blood to save you and I. So it's the most epic battle in all of the universe. But if Satan can deceive one third of the angels that are stronger than you as they're in the presence of God... Be careful. If any man thinks he stands, let him take heed, lest he fall. This, your soul is the most important currency in the universe. And here's the part where I come as a man of God in love to plead with you, to please live for Jesus Christ. God wanted me to share a warning that you and I are in the end time. People are believing the most insane. They're believing on popular level things that have never been believed before in human history. Satan has never had the internet to destroy people. You need to be extraordinarily careful of the media that you let in your home, the media that you watch, be extremely judicious of what comes out of the mouth of people in power. Constantly be on guard of what's coming through the television set. You could do like the United Pentecostal Church Manual suggests and just get rid of the thing. But if you have it, you better use it incredibly judiciously. And again, don't believe popular narratives that are coming out. Because I'm not saying there's anything wrong with watching a cooking show or the Weather Channel. That's not where I'm at. That's not where I'm at. I'm with 
other various things. Because I'm going to tell you, your soul is the most important thing in the universe. It, it matters enough to God to come and suffer the ultimate humiliation for you and I. To have his beer club, to be beaten, to be scourged, to be spat upon, often to be hit with the closed fist, to be slapped with the open fist, to be betrayed by one of his closest confidants, it meant to be made fun of, mocked, to have Roman soldiers bow the knee, to have them put a robe on him, to be beat over the head, to have a crown of thorns. The thorns in the Holy Land are huge. They're an inch long or more and extremely hard. They're far more than a, than a rosebud and had that on his head. And then he suffered six hours with Nails that he made the iron for on a tree that he created, breathing air that he made on an earth that he created, and shed blood for you and I. Your soul is back. Yeah. Right. Thank you. And Satan has pulled out every He goes about as a roaring lion. He knows his time is short. And he is doing everything. There's never been the internet to try to deceive before. If you can't handle the internet, don't get on the internet. Just check your emails or something. Not everybody can handle it. Just because everybody's doing it doesn't mean that the church does it. We are salt and we are light. We lead the way. We are not led by this world. We're the anchor. One, one reason we're a New Testament Pentecostal Apostolic Church is because we owe it to backsliders. We owe it to God and our salvation. But one of the minor reasons as well, backsliders need to be able to come back to the same Holy Ghost filled Apostolic Church teaching the same thing that they heard when they left. Because the gospel doesn't change. Amen. Sin is still sin. Yes. Let's pray together. Yes. God, I glorify you. I love you. And I try to deliver your word about the way you want me to do it. I really, really did, God. I really want it. God, the way you said to do it. God, I love you and I love your people. God, I know you love us far greater than any earthly love we could ever know. God, help all of us. First of all, God, help some of us to repent. That we need to ask your forgiveness for things we've done wrong in our lives. For websites we visited, for things we looked at. Maybe flirting with people of the opposite sex. Now maybe some types of pornography, Jesus. Maybe it's just time. God, that we're just wasting time instead of doing things for you, Jesus. God, help us to repent. You're a holy God, and you desire a pure people. You said you're coming back from church without a spot, wrinkle, blemish, and such thing. And God, we know it's only by your grace and your love that we can make it. Yes. You said Jesus is the righteous, scarcely be saved. What happens to you? unrighteous and sinner. God, help us. Help us to have a heart that is yes. totally dedicated yes. to you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Yes. I love you, God. In Jesus' name, help us, Father. I want to spend eternity in heaven with everyone here. I need your help making. By your grace, you're able to keep us from falling, Lord Jesus Christ. Where sin doth abound, grace did much more abound. The enemy shall come in like a flood. The Spirit of the Lord will lift up the standard against him. God, in Jesus' name, let a great spirit of repentance towards you, not of condemnation, but of repentance towards you, come in our hearts and lives. Love towards you, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, Break down your demonic spirit in Jesus' name. Let some people make decisions that they're going to serve you regardless. God, 
all that little petty things that we stop anybody here. Who did this? Who did that? God, all of those things that are perishable. God, let us keep the main thing, the main thing. God, we glorify you. I love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. I feel